So today we are painting up some Conflict 47 Soviet Heavy Infantry. And I got quite burnt out painting after going through all the Blood Bowl and I was just looking to do something fast and get it out of the queue. Uh, so we're not doing anything fanciful here, nothing amazing. This is really a rush job. So instead what I'm gonna talk about is more of the uh, thought process that I go into when painting something uh, like this or anything in general, but this should be fairly quick. We're starting off with, I already undercoated them with a mix of Vallejo model color, camo black brown mixed with an equal amount of Vallejo model color camo olive green. And then over that I am now dry brushing straight camo olive green and that's used to be what was called uh, Russian, was it Russian uniform? No, I think Russian green in the Vallejo model range. But anyway, they changed the name and annoyed me so much. Uh, one thing, notice right off the bat, I haven't worked with metal miniatures for so long. I kind of forgot dry brushing metal miniatures is different than plastic because plastic is so smooth. Even if it's primered, uh, metal still has some, well, at least these, these weren't the best casts. Had little pot marks and other uh, peculiarities in the in the surfaces which pick up the dry brushing much more so I had to go really really light uh, just a very small amount of paint on the brush next is an even lighter dry brush this time a mix of the previous camo olive green mixed with some Vallejo game color uh, dead flesh and probably should have gone a little bit more towards dead flesh here because uh, I'm gonna put, be putting some very heavy washes on these guys uh, and that's gonna darken them significantly. Uh, also, the reason why I went for the green was kind of obvious. I didn't really have much choice in my mind. Uh, this is a fantasy Weird War game, so it's made up, but it's still based in uh, historical Russian army and in the Russian army, everything's green. You really don't have much choice. So going through this, the idea I'm trying to do is add colors where I can or something to break up the pattern because we are just starting off with a everything is green, which is quite boring to be honest. Next is the metal bits. Uh, this is Vallejo Model Air Steel, my favorite color. Uh, mixed with black to tone it down a bit uh, because we don't want metal uh, weaponry or uh, guns like this to be you know bright shiny steel they should be more of a gun metal or a very dark color probably actually went a little bit too light on them uh, considering their use but again have to add some sort of pop somewhere here For the tubing on top, I went with Vallejo model color desert yellow, and I was really attempted to do them red or something like that uh, to just, just make that miniature more interesting, but you kind of have your hands tied when you're doing historical miniatures, even though this is a weird war thing. Uh, it's still, like I said, historically based, so uh, you know, putting bright red tubes on a war vehicle or war suit would be a little odd. Uh, so just going with the desert yellow and then I also gave him a very light dry brush by adding some buff into the mix. There's some bits of an undersuit exposed and if you really want to paint these guys fast you can leave it green because it's realistic and probably would be green as well but uh, again, I needed to add some more colors into this thing so not everything is green. Uh, and I'm using Vallejo Game Color uh, Stonewall Gray, which I do regret now um, because it's kind of an odd choice. I don't know why I thought of gray. Uh, something closer to khaki would have been better. I was thinking the desert yellow would be good, but I already used that on the tubing, so I needed something else. And I also needed a light color, uh, but I think khaki would have been a better choice than the gray. On the left arms, I decided to add some numbers. I really wanted to do some slogans, but the area is too small. So I'm just carefully painting in some numbers with white paint. And uh, again, that helps to break up the green. That's 
Like I said, it's the same process throughout this whole thing. I'm trying to break up the green the best I can. And then on the other arm, I'm adding decals. Uh, fortunately, I got quite a lot of uh, Russian stars from, I believe it's I-94 Enterprises. Uh, they make a lot of very small decals. So uh, putting them on the right arm, and also I varied them up a bit. Uh, some of them are different size, some of them have a yellow edge to them, some of them don't, uh, just to add a little bit of variety to each model. And then we finish up by giving everything a nice thick brown and black ink wash. You know you're painting fast when you've covered 90% of the miniature with the wash in the end, but that's what we're doing. And I tried something a little bit different this time. Instead of using my glaze medium to thin out the wash, I tried Flow Aid, and the results were interesting. Uh, it made the paints what I can best describe as slippery. Um, normally with a wash, you get some collecting on flat surfaces, but this, with the Flow Aid, it went right into the recesses between the plates, uh, which is nice most of the time. Uh, but I did need some coloration or discoloration on the plates as well. Uh, for example, the the yellow tubing on top, which I um, did that with a different wash. I wanted something a little bit more brown. But when I tried it on the tubing, uh, it flowed in the uh, areas where the tubing it um, hits the, the helmet and the shoulder and didn't actually settle in the ribbing of it. It just kind of just slipped to the bottom. So I had to redo that wash, but uh, it's kind of interesting. You can use different items to make washes and they perform differently. And that is it. I told you this was going to be really quick. Nothing fancy here. Just wanted to show you kind of the process of what I'm thinking about when I go through things, why they're painted a certain color, and what I can do to try to fix things when they are painted a certain color. So we have this very green paint job here. Did my best to try to add a little bit of color to it where I can. Uh, did add a few little details. I'm actually continuing to work on these things, add a bit more details. Spiced up the little backpack thing a bit, added a small amount of rust, and I will continue to do that if I want to. Uh, especially with things like battle damage or even small details, you don't have to paint everything at once. Uh, just do a very basic paint job like this, and then, you know, so you can play with them on the table, and then take them home, and a couple days, weeks, months later, you can add more details. Uh, you know, add things up, spice them up. Uh, you know, I may, like I said, I may add some chipping to these things, or another wash here or there, maybe some, uh, maybe eventually I'll add some slogans to the chest pieces or something like that. Sky's the limit, but for now, that is it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.